graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, guy makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com, and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcast. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. And this is Jennifer. And boy, it's been it's been a while. Chris, what's going on? Well, we Kate, so this is Two Strangers One Podcast 2.0. Is is baseball host. It feels weird to say that. She's um, unfortunately, you know, she's working right now. She's got a full time job, and she basically bowed out. She said, "Chris, you know, I'm busy. I'm working." And it's bittersweet because it's a good thing because she's in a good spot and yeah, got good things working and everything. But at the same time, it ended the adventure. So yeah, I mean, I really, it's hard to expect someone all of their time and like, no, you don't have to work. You didn't mention anything about a cult in this. <laughs> Do I need to back out now? Yeah, you got to sli- slice your wrist and uh, <laughs> drink the Kool Aid. Swear on the Bible and uh, swear. No, I don't know. You got to swear on the laptop and say, you know, I do solemnly swear to give my soul sacrifice a chicken and my firstborn to the podcast. Well, that being said, she she had real life always comes before podcasting. So. Um, I wish her all the best. Absolutely. Um, she, she, she was with me for, you know, over a year. I mean, uh, like my friend Andy said, you know, we had over our, by the time we got to our um, Stranger Con episode, we had, that was like episode 118 or something mm-hmm. like that. So 118 hours. That's, that's More syndication. So. That's syndication time. You know, like whenever a TV show hits uh, five seasons, whenever they hit a hundred episodes, they go into syndication. So technically, oh, okay. if if we were a radio show, if we were a TV show, we'd be in syndication by now. Um, you know, because that's that's when you know, like shows. Like I never watched Big Bang Theory until they hit syndication. I you know, I heard about it. I never really watched it. You know, saying all those. You know, uh, everyone loves Raymond. Uh, who else? All, the, all those shows. I Seinfeld. I never really watched. I mean, I wasn't a super big fan of Seinfeld. But then when it popped out on syndication, that's when I started watching. And you know. Get unheard of for that time frame. <laughs> I'll be yeah, there almost for sex, you. Yeah, almost sacrilegious on that one, you know. And the I, they, they always had the they always had the air condition pumping in that show because the girls' nipples were always hard, were always hard, and I always I would love to I know that the it hair was, done was always on staticky. <laughs> like if you look at it now, you'll see like Jennifer Aniston especially like the hair just for some reason there's some that just happen to be standing up on end like it looks like she put her hands on one of those freaky. Oh, light uh, balls, you know? Yeah, the lightning ball. Yeah. So this is, this is, I don't want to say a spinoff. See, I would use all these TV terminologies. Yeah. Because a spinoff would be if it was something totally it's different. It's continuing the adventure. It's still Two Strangers, One Podcast, but it's, it's different as in you're the new co-host. And, hey, hey. and you know, Hi. Like, you're the Looking Rochester girl. This. Yeah. And I'm the New York City guy and I'm the nerd and, you know, you're the, well, I guess we're both single parents. Yeah. But, you know, you have, Three, three and I got one, so you got me. You got me. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, I mean, yeah, I got three kids. Louis is six, Jessica is five, and Anthony is a year and a half. Um, Lou and Jess, they're diagnosed with autism. We talked about that one episode before and everything, but it's just kind of something to mention too, because like in the future, um, there's going to be some interesting stories to come about. <laughs> I can tell you that one. I mean, um, I mean, just pretty much hopping on board. I had a friend who asked me, he was just like, well, doesn't this take like the two tips and relationships and stuff like that these days? I mean, you know, Facebook, you yeah, know, happened to come on, on something similar and conversation kind of started from there, but it was about this podcast yeah, that well, the conversation. Me and Kristen did 118 episodes and oh, we were absolutely. still technically strangers, you know, so, yeah. you know, this is, you know, I yeah. guess if we get to episode 236, then I guess, you know, if you want to change right. the name by that point. <laughs> well, you know, some of the confusion also could kind of be brought about from, like, the last time they, like, we talked about things. Like, the last time we talked about things, not to bring up anything or whatever, but we were at Comics, etc., and we had gone, not Facebook official, but we had gone podcast official. Yeah. And oh, then yeah, a couple right. episodes later, you're just like, yeah, I'm single. And that was kind of where you left it, too, which kind of made me almost sound like I kind of hardcore... Oh no! You at the know, same time, was, but I was like, okay, you know, I'm sorry. Which yeah, which I believe <laughs> that wasn't. episode. It's you awesome and Kristen... doing like want to broadcast to my family. Like, hey, I'm doing this new venture, and I, you know, listen to the hot period. The hot period episode that should be very tempting to you to yeah. want to entice you to. <laughs> 
download well, and take gives, the time. It kind of gives but, people an idea where, where we're coming from. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, no, that was like a, you know, very short. I mean, the whole thing, too, is like, you know, having the three kids and especially the two with the challenges they have and everything like that. I just kind of realized that right now with everything I got going on with, I did graduate. We had talked about, yay! You we graduated. had talked about before that I was going to school. Well, now I'm not going to school anymore. I'm, you know, now a bum in the real world. In the real world. Yeah, baby. hey. And um, starting the business got to really become a very real reality and everything. So that's pretty cool. Got some jobs coming up and all that. October is looking like to be a very good month. So there's pretty good stories coming out of that, too. I mean, you know, weddings. Yeah. There's always stories of weddings. So but RochesterPerfectWeddings.com? Right, the website is www.RochesterPerfectWeddings, PerlerWeddings.com. Yeah. Yeah, you know, my number's out there, but... I mean, pretty much, yeah. I mean, we've been fine. I mean, like, it was, it started out as a friendship. It's remained yeah. a friendship. It is a good friendship. We were kissy face for a couple of weeks. Uh, but. <laughs> but now it's a good, we're now, we're, now we're in a really good, it's kind of good, actually, if you think about it, that it worked out that way, too, because eventually couples run out of things to talk about. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, if we would have went on this adventure together, like, you know, being a couple. Yeah. Eventually, you're gonna get dead air, Chris. <laughs> if I gotta hear about fucking New York City one more time, Chris, that's it. You love it so much, why don't you fucking move back down there? So you know, well, for the guys out there, I guess you know, I, you know, podcasting, podcasting doesn't get you laid. I don't know. I get. <laughs> point. No. I gotta become a rock star. No, I, gotta, I, gotta learn, I gotta learn to play the guitar or something. No, no it's gotta do that. It's I'm gotta do with the job. fact that yeah, just in this place and time and everything like that too. It just you know is. Got a, rock, got a rock out. Falanga Inc. here. I call my family Falanga Inc. It's kind of my way of owning the fact that, you know, yes, indeed, my first two children are from my previous marriage, which ended in 2000 and I'm trying to think. It, it, 2009 was the horrible year, and it really technically ended in 2010. But, um, you know, I did have a child later on with another gentleman and everything, but I am a single mom. So it's kind of my way of owning the fact that it says your baby daddies. And it sounds, it's, <laughs> I know it sounds a hell of a lot but... worse than what it actually. I know is. it's always like, oh god. Yeah, but yeah, for, I mean, for all our female like, listeners, I mean, you know, you're happens. you're rocking it. But I'm saying, like, you know, you you finish school with the three kids, oh, yeah. you got your own business going. So, like, you know, all the the hey. girl power and everybody out there who want to, you know, support. You know, and she, now she I'm got three mouths to feed. So, well, well, four mouths to feed if you count your own so yeah so please give this girl some work if you know anybody getting married <laughs> i do need work <laughs> you know um because and it is um, and i'm trying to get work right this weekend um chris helped me out with flyering on that whole thing and that oh what a great time gay pride was i mean I, chris and i also had two different experiences on that one because um chris went with his new roommate charlene which that probably should also be explained too because you last time we're talking, you were in the bachelor pad. Oh, yeah. The last time I moved, was, I yeah. was, okay, so I've moved, this is like the third time I've moved this in year. In like what? Four, I went from a five trailer months. park to a bachelor pad to, now I've actually, I do really honestly feel like I'm home. That's Like awesome. I'm home, home. And actually, because it was the first time I was with a, a couple and they lived in a trailer park and, uh, you know, park. Yeah. And uh, the, the unfortunate negative stereotypes. Um, there was something. Then I moved out to uh, basically a bachelor pad, and it was I was, for the lack of a better term, renting what was supposed to be a room. And it's and I'm not speaking bad about it, but it was basically a glorified sun deck. Right. It was you know it was a room. Um, there were windows on three sides of the, the of, and then the the door to the room actually it was covered with windows also. I mean, um, but I think like, but it was like a sheer curtain. So like, if I had my light on. And I'm like changing in my underwear. You know, I'm pretty sure if there were people sitting out in the they living room, I'm pretty sure they could see me in my underwear. Oh, so you give them a show, right? Now. Yeah, <laughs> behind the curtain, <laughs> and um, and it was very, very much a bachelor pad. I mean, literally, there were swords around yeah. the house. I mean, decor decorative swords. It wasn't like there, you know, swords are just all over the place, but you know, swords for display, liquor bottles all over the place. Um, which is kind of weird because I don't drink or, 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 or do drugs, but so like, you know, talk about resisting temptation. I mean, there they were literally, you know, uh, I went camping with you most of the nights you're in early reading your comic books. Oh yeah. Reading my digital comics yeah. on my, on my computer. But that being said, like, you know, uh, one of my roommates was, was a very social butterfly. Like if he was bringing girls home from the, uh, 
I'm knocked the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? I'm dead to the world. So I would wake up and I'd see, you know, the ashtray filled with a mil- million butts, empty glasses or half. So you had your own half, version of the hangover. Half drunk glasses. Oh, it was, it was like, you know, I'd go to sleep and it would just be, you know, um, you know, normal apartment. You know, I did, you know, my little bit of cleaning here and there. And then, you know. Was you, there any chickens running around? Like, <laughs> or a tiger in the bathroom, you know? <laughs> yeah, Mike Tyson's passed like, out yeah, on I would the say couch. Mike Tyson shows up looking for his tiger. But that's the one thing I do. Oh, my God. Like, I mean, I had I had my own little place to sleep in the room, but a basher pad. I mean, it was one of those right. places. If you did pass out, luckily, I didn't pass out. I didn't wake up to any pass out the other roommate. <laughs> he was in and out. You know, he kept to himself. You know, he works at a, he worked, he's like a delivery guy for a pizza place. So there was constantly like pizza in the fridge, but I didn't touch it. I'm not, I'm the type, like I don't touch anybody's food. Right. You know, I wish that was their policy, but, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, he was, he was, he was in and out and I know they hang out together, but you know, the, the guy who was the pizza delivery guy, he was just like in and out, you know what I'm saying? Like, I I don't want to say he was cold to me or maybe he just was, he's just to himself. So, um, so I left that area because our friend, uh, Charlene, my new right. roommate was looking for a place and she was, she had to set a line earlier today and I want to adopt it. Um, I'm from the hood. She's from the woods. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Because, that uh, she's, pretty you know, accurate, yeah. she's a, she's a good old girl, I guess would be the, the proper way. I mean, she calls herself a redneck, but I don't want to, I don't want to use that word if the no, negative kind connot- but it's a good thing. It's yeah. like not, yeah. she doesn't need anybody to help her fix her car. She doesn't need anybody, which is uh, good. Cause she's with Justin. Who, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> like, <laughs> he like, fixed no car. I would say the second time I met Charlene, because I've known Charlene for a couple of months now, and uh, we had gone out to a uh, cookout at a friend's house, and it was the second time I met Charlene, because the first time I met her, I mean, we're all at a bar. Once again, a guy who doesn't drink, right. hanging out in a bar. Occasions. Oh, was it? I think so. I'm pretty sure and that was so, the first time she came out. Oh, yeah. Interesting Patrick's night like, for her. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember? So, St. Yeah. Patrick's Day at, uh, at Pineapple Jacks. At Pineapple Jacks. Let's bring her. <laughs> Which hey. goes back to a, a couple episodes, uh, yeah. a while back for the episode called Chris Pineapple Jacks. Chris turned into such the male groupie on Springer, but. <laughs> they were they're, they're good musicians. So the he second. such a man crush. Oh, yeah. No, it's. it's but, a, I don't even deny it. We got to get him on sometime. Who's that? Your little man crush. I bet you he'd come on if we asked him. My man crush? Your man crush on the lead singer of Springer there? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean. I bet they're you. All, they're all good. They're all, they're all really good guys. That's what I mean, I'm saying. I've, he seems I've, like a really real person as far as like his persona that he's up on like Facebook yeah. and everything. Well, so. I mean, in the interactions that I've done on the on the website, if I if I understand correctly, the drummer is the guy that kind of like handles the, the oh, Facebook okay, right and stuff on. like that. And that's the funny thing is that these are... I mean, let's, you know, I don't want to, once again, I don't, want, I don't want to fall into like stereotypes, but all the guys in the band are white yeah. except for the drummer and the drummer. I don't know. He's not, I don't know. He's not black, but he, or maybe, he's not white. He has, no, he has a certain, off-white. he has a certain <laughs> tan color to his skin and not that there's anything wrong with that because okay. hey, he's keeping the beat yeah. and he fucking does an excellent job. And that's the funny thing is because if you saw this guy walking into a Springer show, he, he doesn't, he, he doesn't look, he doesn't yeah. look like a fan of the guys of the band that he's playing for. You know right. what I'm saying? The other guys, you know, there's a guy with long hair, you know, real big tall guy, you know, the, the bassist looks like, I mean, for anybody who, uh, the, the band Godsmack. Okay. There's a, there's a, the lead singer. Heard is, of, but I don't. Yeah, the yeah. lead singer. His name is Sully Erna. Uh, this guy is Sully Erna's twin brother, the bassist. Uh, the other guitarist, once again, kind of shaggy blonde hair, you know. And and the lead singer looks like uh, uh, Chris Jericho, the wrestler Chris yeah. Jericho. You know. Um. You know. Yeah, very, that reference I remember. Yeah, he's yeah, very charismatic. He he's a good singer, you know. And and I'm I'm right up there up front. I'm singing right along with him. Like I I mean, besides yeah. maybe about three or four of their songs, I don't know. But I mean, you were talking about a four hour set. I'm singing right along with them. Like I mean, yeah. you know, I, I, I would. And love they that. did. They put on a good show. That's why they got a following. There's a few bands here in Rochester that really do put on a good show mm-hmm. and can maintain a good following. Like I um, I missed me and the boys at Pelicans on Saturday night. And I was real disappointed about mm-hmm. that one because the last time I saw that band, they were. That was also like a hard rock heavy metal band that I used to I'm go. Not um, Brass Taxi. Is I one. have seen Brass Taxi before. Um, you know, yeah, they're good. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, but 
I don't know. I think my attitude was just off that night. <laughs> you know, like sometimes that's the thing too. Like if you don't go in with the right mindset or the right head or if something happens and you're just kind of like, oh, huh, <laughs> you know, then you're kind of just, you know, you if you get that cloud in your head, then you're there. You I know? just heard of them. I want to see them. Yeah. Um, I think they were just at Download. NOLA's actually. I'm pretty, I want to say that I just saw them at NOLA's. I'm pretty sure they're the ones I just saw. Anyhow. Um, There's one called Download. I, Download, I, 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 not I, familiar They've been with, recommended. No. Um, I like like that party band. That party band is a really excellent local band mm-hmm. here, and um, also uh, Double Tape Blues Band is a really good band too. But they broke up. But most of those guys have now become Mike and the Motivators. Mm-hmm. It's like pretty much like everybody except for one dude, <laughs> you know. But they changed the name and everything like that. A lot too. of bands are like that. Everybody yeah. is like, it's a very um, what's the word? <laughs> incestuous. Bands are very incestuous. Where yeah. like you'll see one guy. And they go and they do their own thing. Like my friend Andy's in a band called, um, well, he was in a band called 200 Proof, but mm-hmm. they changed the name. They didn't want to get your proof. Like right. you said, minus one guy, you know, plus somebody else. So bands are very incestuous when it comes to, to stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I would love to have them on the show. Actually, what I mean, what I would like is, you know, you know, if I had the money, I would hire them, like, to do the next Stranger Con or have, yeah. or have the Stranger Con at one of their concerts or something to that effect. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But um, oh god, okay, that brings up that brings up another sore subject. What, the along. Sour, or Stranger Con? Stranger Con. Why do you say sore subject? I mean, well, no, no, it no. was a good show. No, the it, night it, it was very entertaining. I I enjoyed myself. Well, the, no, you know? no, it was it was for the actual for the actual episode. Um, right. You know, the, our episode was probably what twelve minutes long, uh, and not the episode itself, but what was recorded because it got cut off. The guy that power. the guy that runs the place. Who is a friend of mine and, 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 you know, I've, I've said his name a million times and he's a good guy, but, you know, what had happened was, is, you know, someone needed to work the board as in, you know, they're, they're doing the audio and the lights and stuff like that. Had I known it didn't click in my head that I needed someone to work the board. So had I known that I would have, I would have gotten somebody to work the board. And when did you find that out? Just out of curiosity. Well, it was, I didn't the, even it was that the that night was... of, and honestly, I mean, I did think of it, but I, I didn't realize. Long story short, he painted the picture like I'm doing you a favor by working the board. Like when we hired him and we hired and we rented oh. the space, his job is to work the door, take money for tickets. Um, he took it upon himself to be like the guy that handles like the money for the water, the water that was being yeah. sold. And I, you know, basically you were going to handle that. Right. And so he's like, oh, you know, I honestly thought, you know, and especially being, you know, quote unquote friend, you know, he was going to be, he was going to work the board and the lights. You know, and it was not like I was asking for, you know, when some shows, you know, I wasn't asking for an elaborate light setup. Right. Just switch yeah, I mean, up like and switch the down. One improv group you had, which was just the duo who for anybody looking for anyone trying to look, you know, like improv. Yeah, Keith whatever, is like a super talented uh, musician. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's when you funny. came up on stage. Oh, they were just, they were I just working. thought they were kicked the whole way through them and um entertaining. But I mean, they kind of spoke more to our um our age group Mm -hmm. you know and then um what was it two fat ladies which definitely turns out not to be anything of the sort of (laughs) two fat ladies at all there's no one fat and i think i think well i think there was a female in their group but every other time i've seen them they never it was just guys oh really so it was funny that you know there's all these guys but they they did have a female as part of the group which if i'm if i'm not mistaken was the person our connection to all the two fat ladies and um and Left for Dead. Left for Dead. Left for Dead right. is the other yeah. one. And, and Left for Dead's gimmick is there isn't, there's no one in that whole group under like 55 years right. old. And that's the thing. Like, I think if my mom or my dad had, I mean, like, and I'm not trying, you know, but I was seriously, I think my mom and my dad probably would have found that hysterical. Like, there was just a few references in there and stuff like that too that I was just kind of like, you yeah. know, and I looked at Heather, Heather, or my friend with me, mm-hmm. you know, and we both kind of flashed each other a look a few times where we we're just like, <laughs> what? And it's, well, I mean, it is kind of funky that, you got all these people. I mean, I say the youngest person is probably 55, but that's, yeah. you know, there are a bunch of older people and they are playing to a crowd of 30, right. you know, 20s, 30s uh, people. But, you know, like I said, uh, all the people that performed that night. Um, oh, they were great. Solo acoustic. Um, oh, and, yeah. He had a lot of talent. Yeah. He yeah. was he was freaking awesome. Um, unfortunately, the night kind of ended early, so uh, Honest John and Super Sarah didn't take the stage because we kind of, at the end of the night, things were kind of just really winding down. And so, it I mean, I paid sense. him. I paid him. And then hopefully, you know, maybe I can 
you know, I maybe did technically pay him. I said, "Hey, here. look, come on, out, you know, come on out and do maybe the next Stranger Con." Right. Like, you know, you know, that'd be that'd be funny to see like Honest John open up for uh, Springer. <laughs> hey, you know, get the crowd warmed up. But that being said, so okay, so the guy who's working the house, he's he's doing lights and stuff like that. Now, all he had to do was take five minutes and show me how to do it. And okay, he would have to go on. He would have to work the the board and the lights when I was actually up on stage, but I would have done the rest of the night if it wasn't for that. So um, by the time the actual, our podcasting, you know, all the improv groups are going going on. Now is, you know, the time for Two Strangers, One Podcast, the 8 o'clock slot, the primetime slot. Yeah. You know, we hit the stage. And at the time, because I had asked him, look, uh, I need a plug. You know, I need an extension cord. So he goes, he points over to the edge of the stage. He goes, it's right there. Now I see a power strip. Right. So in my mind, when I think of an extension cord, I think of a one single Core cord. The, yeah. Um, so we were recording. My laptop is kind of old. So basically, we got about 10 minutes of recording in before the laptop finally died. It's a, the, the battery on this thing is just gone. This yeah. laptop's like eight years old. So he goes, um, so he when he said, when he points to the power strip, and click in my head that, you know, I still didn't plug in the laptop. We were still running off of battery power when we started. Right. So, um you know the very our last the, the very last moment of the stranger con episode you can hear me calling out for him because i wanted him to get, get an extension cord. cord yeah well by that time he's standing outside talking i, saying, I don't think he was even in the building no, at that yeah point, he, he still, was outside I mean... talking to his buddies and i had called out for him for like three times and then at the end of the night when everything was said and done i'm like look dude you know i needed you to and he goes oh i pointed the plug out for you and I didn't realize that this was like a custom job. It was. Where do a- people think like pointing is helpful? I mean, like yeah. seriously. I just went through this too. I mean, get up those flyers for gay pride. Mm-hmm. I was at Staples. Okay, I got Lou and Chess with me. Mm-hmm. Now it should be quick and easy. I got the thing on the USB drive. I should be able to just zip in, print off the amount of copies that I need, and zip out. Right. Mm-hmm. Thing keeps some reason it, it wouldn't bring up my flyer. Mm-hmm. So and it's saying ask for assistance. So this, I push that, mm-hmm. and then I'm like. Same, Same thing's thing. happening. It's telling me I gotta ask for assistance. You know, can you look at it? You know, try this, try that, blah blah blah. You know, she's shouting to me and everything, and you know, and I'm pushing. I'm like, this isn't working. So meanwhile, thank God I had my son with me actually that day too, because then he starts doing. You know, I mean, like I sometimes find this very annoying, but this was very helpful this day, mm-hmm. where I was like, he's just there. He's just like, it's not working. She's doing what you said, but it's just not working. <laughs> Out of the mouth. Print off 350 copies. 350. <laughs> she's got zero. <laughs> And he's just shouting to her. And she's like, well, try this and try that. And it's like, are you kidding me? You know, so I did it one more time. I'm like, I'm sorry. It, it is not working. Would you mind? I mean, but I have to ask her. It's almost like I'm begging her, like, please, yeah, please, please, almighty your state, job? these person. You know, can you please come over and take a look at this copier that is telling you, know, beep, 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 ask for assistance. Please find a, you know, please. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please ask a representative for assistance. That's what it's telling me to do. Mm-hmm. That is what I'm doing. And yet, still, that's not. I mean, like, where do they think that, you know, like, oh, it's over there. Yeah. You know, on the side of the stage. That's good. Yeah. You know, like, no, that's not helpful. That doesn't, that, that doesn't get the job done. You got to make sure that mission is accomplished before you count it as a job done. Yeah. And, you know? Uh, so, yeah. And when he said, when he pointed at the plug, you know, it, Sorry, but it, it was. was, was we I mean, need yeah, some June, fans. It was June fifteenth. I mean, I can't. You yeah, know, next I, Stranger Con fans, <laughs> or at least like little dollar fans that you can sell to people. You know, <laughs> hire people on. Yeah, the side you of know, you get them for the dollar, but then you mark them up for five dollars. And get them there you go. Store, That's yeah. right. Yeah, because oh yeah, we're we're wallet raping. <laughs> Not ashamed of it either. Oh, yeah. when, you go to, when you go to like the amusement parks and stuff yeah. like that, when they charge you. So basically, now I didn't know at the end of the night, and he goes, "Well, I pointed out the power strip to you. I didn't know that this was of the of the people that helped them put the theater together. It was a power strip that had a thirty foot cord on the end of it. I didn't know this. Well, Every other power strip in the, in the you didn't pick it up. No, I thought I thought it was you know. <laughs> what did you do? Like he pointed it out. You just looked at it. And you're like, okay, and that was it. Well, you know what it was. He goes, it's over there, and then like so. When I say I need an extension cord... Oh, well, you know, you didn't set up until right before you went on. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It wasn't... Oh, okay. So I was ca- and then caught up in the excitement of everything. I guess you're everything. not stupid after all. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm the techie guy, you know. Things need to be plugged in. And so what had happened was is 
you know, I called out for him like three different times during yes. the podcast. And at that time, he was outside talking to his buddies. And then, you know, when night was all said and done and I'm cleaning up and everything like that, like, you know, he kind of throws the line at me like, well, you know, I'm not it's not my job to be like, you know, the the techie guy, you know, like it's not my job to be, a, 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 you know, I forgot the word he used you know, uh, technical assistance or whatever, the, whatever. And, you know, and oh, like, come on. Yeah. But I mean, had you just technical been, assistance, I have a plug. I need to plug it into something. Please provide me yeah. the whole. I mean, because I had called out for him three times. Now, mind you, we're in front of a state. What if somebody was having a fucking heart attack? What if something was going on? What if the fucking ceiling caved in? You know, I mean, you know, anything could have been going on. I hollered out three times for this guy. So, um, that being said, I mean, the, the laptop went out. It really threw me off. Like, you know, I'm so used to recording with a laptop on that, yeah. you know, when, when the screen went black and, you know, the night it was hot and all this other stuff. And Is that why you guys decided to cut the episode short? Because I noticed that, too. Well, the episode got cut short and it was just like it was. Because you guys did kind of were just like, and that's energy. a little sample. Now, bye-bye. Yeah, it was. We were planning. <laughs> I was expecting a lot more people to show up. I mean, we yeah. had well over a thousand people invited on Facebook, Um, spent the day before, you know, actually not the day before. I mean days before flyering putting up flyers handing out flyers doing all types of stuff you know trying to go on facebook pages yeah. and reach out to people it was a rough it was, weekend though there was a lot going on that weekend yeah there was a roller yeah. derby that weekend there was uh well the day before there was a big street fair so i don't know if people were in the mood to go yeah, out east end had happened the day before too there was a lot of recovering people <laughs> oh yeah the east end fest Remember? Week, yeah. which was my birthday and That's then right. We went out That's to the, right. We went out. We went out to the East End Fest, and Which once again, I'm was going out. To, okay, this year. Sorry, I know a lot of people loved it and all, but well, I mean, you I know what it was it is okay. they. Um, but it might be my age. It was too. a reason for people to come out and drink. Yeah, it was. You know, what I'm saying I think people came out with an open container, if I'm not mistaken. But at the East End Fest. A lot of bars do tell you, like, most of the time you're not allowed to take the drink outside. Yeah, you can't take the drink outside. And you can't, even if you have it in a brown bag. area, like, you know, like Temple even, too. There's been times that I've been told not to take my drink outside, even though they have, like, their little enclosed smoking area. Let's provide, like, a perimeter kind of blocked. Yeah. And there's people. uh, I mean, at the East End Fest, I mean, also that there were people. It was just, it it was was, Even though it was outside, they had people frisking. They had people. You had to show your ID. Going in, it wasn't like there were kids running around. Did you get first? I didn't get first. Did you? Well, there were. I mean, there were people there that were kind of doing frisking. I did see somebody, but I think and I think they're checking. You know, they're checking purses and and backpacks. I mean, after after the Boston Marathon thing. But you know, you remember too. This Willie Stand Fest was the only one that we're doing this year. Where, like in the past, there has been three East End Fests through the summer. So. Mm -hmm. I think it was kind of a little bit more unusually crowded because most people were like, you know, there's only one this year and hitting this regardless, you know, and we were supposed to have a bigger crowd and then everybody kind of started japping throughout the day, which kind of sucked, you know what I mean? And that kind of started setting up the mood a little like, eh, you know, but I mean, there was, it was just overly crowded. They ran out of captain at that one bar. Oh yeah. yeah, Oh God. Yeah. They try to do it. How do you run out of captain Morgan? First off, I am an established captain drinker. I mean, like, you know, not too proud of everything like that, but everybody knows my brand is captain. Mm -hmm. I waited 20 minutes. Because, I mean, I was gone for a while, remember? Yeah, because the, pla- the place was packed, packed, but that being said. And there was a little bit of a line and everything like that. And I finally get up to the bar and everything. I order my drink and everything. And instead of the girl letting me know that they ran out of Captain, I do know what, you know, um, Jack's Jack tastes Daniels like. Because is... my ex-husband used to drink it, you know? Jack Daniels is whiskey <laughs> and Captain Morgan's oh, yeah. rum. And I was already drinking rum. So, like, I don't want to switch liquors either because me personally at home because it just doesn't, you know. Yeah, it was a it liquor and beer. Well. You're in the clear. Beer than liquor. It can't be sicker. Well, but I'm I mean, the liquor. And, and then I went back up, and she just she caught an attitude in me too. Like I think I even remember her just being like, you know, like, well, what do you want me to do about it? Or so it was like, give me what I ordered. Well, we're out. Yeah. Okay, the, well, then tell oh, me yeah. that you don't have. She it. was just like, well, what do you want your money back? And I was like, that's a start. Yeah, I remember saying that specifically to her. That's a start, you know. And I was very surprised too because it's a bar that I'm used to going to. But that's the thing too. I have not had a problem with that bar ever before East End, or I have gone back one time since East End. Haven't had any issues with that place, but I usually also deal with one of the male bartenders, but there is a couple of female bartenders there, too, that are pretty nice. But, yeah, I was very surprised in that particular night that they were running like that. I mean, especially, too, on East End Fest. How do you run out of cats? Yeah, it's East End Fest. Captain Morgan, which is, like... We left at, like, what, 1030? 
Yeah. Because we, we decided to go somewhere else. Yeah, because it was, was just actually so... a lot nicer and mellower and everything, so that was good. Yeah, we went, because the East End Fest was one central area. We kind of just went to a place off the beaten path. It was so uh, hot. <laughs> yeah, it, it was get and be standing outside and drinking because they were out. There was, you know, every booth, pretty much every booth there. If they weren't, if it wasn't a place that sold food, everything right. else was there for alcohol. It wasn't That's like the it other was... thing, too. They had the food trucks this year, too, which I personally don't think was cool. Oh, yeah, I remember, yeah, you mentioned yeah. that. <clears throat> I don't, because um, a lot of businesses went through a lot of effort to get just one East End Fest this year. And, I mean, a lot of the reason being is that they make a lot of money during those three fests real hard on trying to do something community-friendly. Because a lot of it was is that the community, the people who live down there, started complaining about it. Which, I mean, I don't know, personally... East End's been around for such a long time and everything. You know, if you don't like that kind of scene, maybe that's not the right place for you to move to, but. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's the people it's who like live moving in across the street from a music bar or something like that and then complaining that the music's too loud. You yeah, know, well, the then go, out yeah, all don't go someplace that's playing music outside all the time. But, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I felt bad for the businesses on that one just because I do think that it did take away because I saw those. Yeah, those trucks were packed. Yeah, the food trucks were rocking definitely, and rolling. Definitely. I mean, like, those guys definitely made some money and everything like that, too. But I think that it definitely just took away from the businesses who did rail. I mean, that festival would not have been happening had it not been for the businesses railing together and really pushing. I could hear. And not saying that they should have been there. All I'm saying is that I know the, the food trucks were getting charged $700 for their operating license. Right. You know, so... You know, I guess money spoke in this situation. And I'm pretty, don't get me wrong, I'm pretty sure the business owners. And that's kind of the whole thing. It's like, you know, I know that they were doing changes and everything like that too, but they're, the businesses, like, they kind of, you know, they get not just drink revenue, but they also get food revenue. Cause there's a lot of bar and restaurant. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You know, you, so there's a lot of bar and restaurants, especially too, like, you know, on East Day of Night too. I mean, I think that they even have like beer special or something like that. Like, isn't that the purpose of the mug? Yeah, they had the yeah the, sure. the places that were selling the mugs. Yeah, and then if you you, get, like, you know like the refill on the mugs is cheaper and everything like that too. They're you know yeah. I mean like they do I mean but everybody made money but still I mean I don't know I just I thought the food truck thing like I just I didn't agree with it. Yeah, well, it's, I, mean, it's, I guess it's, it's kind of the small business owner. Yeah, and me too a little bit. I mean I just kind of see it from their point like where I'm just like you know it's like that. They, I mean they just I think they worked really hard. The food trucks are small business owners. I mean, well, I'm just I'm just playing devil's advocate. I, know, I, 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 just, I understand I where you're coming from. They should have been from. set up outside of well, the and, area, and like it's, right, maybe it by the, the entrances and the exits and That's stuff, true. and not inside the festival. Yeah, I mean, it sets a tone you know? for next year, so now everyone can plan. Okay, look, you yeah. know, if we're gonna have food trucks, well, then they're gonna have to be. You and know, some of the establishments were actually complaining because the food trucks and where they were located was blocking their sight from like certain stages and stuff. Yeah, you can't even, and you you couldn't even if there's a food truck in front of your business, the people can't even see the sign for your business. Right. Like, it's like, oh, here's so and so's restaurant. And well, that was one of the complaints that they had too, is that you know the food trucks blocked the views and blocked the street and. Kind yeah, of maybe it closed and everything. I don't know. I think they should have been able to set up, but I think they should have been able to set up outside of it. Yeah. Well, you learn. I mean, you live and you learn. Like, yeah. I, I know what I know what not to do next Stranger Con. <laughs> make sure I have my no extension cords trucks. with me. <laughs> Your what? Uh, make sure I have my extension cord with me yeah, next Stranger Con. Someone to work the board and everything. <laughs> someone to work the helpful. board. It can't be me this time, it sounds like. So. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. well, the next time, I, I don't think I'm ever going back to that place. But <laughs> There's, uh, Well, we got friends. Yeah, got plenty of friends. So actually, we're way I'll past, say, the, we past the. We're past the. Ha- no, no, no. We're, we're 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 actually. I usually we have a commercial break at about thirty, 30 minutes, minutes in. We're about thirty seven minutes in. We'll be right back after this break. Capturing the love the two of you share on your wedding day. Ceremonies for all couples. No restrictions, no limitations. Simply Perfect Weddings would be honored to officiate and coordinate an unforgettable ceremony full of love, life, and laughter. And since you can't have a wedding without popping the question, Simply Perfect Weddings creates incredible marriage proposals too. For a free consultation, call 415-1817 or rochesterperfectweddings.com. This in 15, East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number 8. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. And we're back. Okay, so we were so... 
Yeah, so Stranger Con, like I said, the performances yeah, are fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, so and and honestly, like you know, to bring back something from earlier, you know, I, I think Kristen towards the end. Um, I think I I thank her for staying with me until Stranger Con. I think maybe she felt like. You know, because I I was talking about Stranger Con like last year in December, so right. she might have been like, you know, and I'm just totally speculating. Oh, she might have been like, on the show. like sticking around oh, until okay. Stranger Con, like, yeah. you know, let's let's get this over with. We've been talking about it for a couple of months. You know, get that out of the way, and then you know I can, you know, because it was right <laughs> after Stranger Con that she kind of dipped off for a second. Yeah, and, everything. and you but know, you had all your stuff going on too, where you were trying to kind of figure out like, okay, what's going to happen? Yeah, and stay moving the and and the batch. You I know. mean, I, like I said, I've moved. I've moved three times since February. The or, yeah, the end yeah. of February, beginning of March. So like, but this opportunity came up, and it really. This was a good move. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm I think this is where you're going to be Kong. settled now. Like, well, no, I'm saying like, yeah, your place now and everything where you've gone to. I don't oh, think you're so going to awesome. be uprooting and moving again. Or it's anything. so like, awesome living with set. a woman. Uh, let me tell she you, she made him. You not. Okay, so here's okay. <laughs> here's the deal. Okay, we're moving in now. The she never wants you to get laid the ever. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I'm if I've spoken uh, if I have chatted a girl up enough. Uh, one, I don't have like quote unquote one night stands. Right. So, um, by the time I've charmed a woman enough to even come to my house, to come into my bedroom, it's pretty much a done deal. She already knows that I'm a nerd. She knows what I like. She and knows she what I don't like. Turn off the lights. You know, I'm, you know <laughs> don't even light a candle. And that being said, <laughs> the way my room is set up, and Charlene could vouch for me on this, um, I kind of, I have my bedroom and then I have I know. Oh, you got it. I think I got that fucker. Okay. Yeah, we there had was a, we had a mosquito, mosquito bothering us for the past half an hour. Fucking mosquito season this year is horrible, but besides the point. Oh, because we had like ridiculous rain. We've like the rain, yeah. like we're like four inches over like the normal rain, rain. So like the mosquitoes have been having fucking orgies in all this rain <laughs> and it's going nuts. So, okay. So where I, where we moved into, I mean, of course there's a common area and then there's my bedroom and actually my bedroom has this wall basically in the middle of it. And then it, it kind of pops so out into split. a whole other area. So basically, I have an office area. Oh, well, that's cool. So what I did was... Yeah, see, I haven't seen the place yet. Even, feel even today, um, I set up... I basically set up a curtain on the way to my office. So I have, like, the bedroom. And my intention is to have the bedroom be normal, quote-unquote normal, you know. Right. And then once you walk into my, quote-unquote, office, that's the fucking nerdy area. That's like, <laughs> and I'll keep all my nerdy shit in the office area, and the bedroom is Double kind of... a little of, curtain there to pull across. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, so, secret curtain. But like I said, I mean, it's not like I'm a player and I'm meeting girls in the bars and bringing them home to my house. Right. You know, by the time someone is willing to go to bed with me there will be on the point of knowing that you got star wars curtains and balances and a genuine chewbacca friend (laughs) (laughs) so yeah so what had happened was is we're you know we're we're setting up the apartment and so um you know charlene my my new roommate you know she goes look i'll make the curtains you know that's she's good with the she's good with the sewing machine which i felt bad because we were her sewing machine now okay my truck um, the door on the back of my truck has not worked in about two years. Okay. It's a long story. The handle broke. Somehow, through freaking magic, I get the door open on the day that I'm helping her move her stuff. All right. Huh? So we pack my truck. We pack my truck. We pack my truck. And uh, I so I don't – okay, I feel bad, but I don't feel bad because – all right, first, because her boyfriend tells me to open the back door, to open the back door of my truck. And I said, look, my back door doesn't open. Wouldn't you know it? I touch the fucking door. It flies open. <laughs> and just so, the person you want that to happen. So, <laughs> so we're packing we're packing my truck. And so then um, he puts her sewing machine in the back. That being said, you know, everything's all packed. Now, my truck is so packed that in my center rear view mirror, I can't see anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can see through my side mirrors. All right, so we're we're leaving her place, going to the new apartment. My back door opens up while you're driving. While I'm driving. Oh shit! I did not. I did not know this. I so, never heard about this. Wow. So her sewing machine hits the ground, oh. cracks the plastic cracks, um, and was actually dragged from behind my car for I would say probably. We were in the country. <laughs> we were right. definitely, we were definitely, I would say what would be the equivalent of maybe two city blocks. 
drag. Oh, now, luckily, thank goodness the cord got stuck on something in my car. Because if not, it would have just been gone, left on the highway. And then a guy, yeah. a guy pulls up next to me and he goes, "Yo, your door, you know, your door's open and you drop stuff back there." So we go back and and all this oh, other stuff. Oh, so you didn't even know the door opened up? I on had you? no idea because oh, my wow. Cause Okay. I mean, I was driving slow, but my my car was so packed, I couldn't see that the door had opened up, the, right. you know, the, the lift gate or whatever the hell you want to call it. So um, her – and I feel bad because – I do feel bad because, you know, she – that's part of her side. You know, she she does things for money and she makes um, – that doesn't yeah. sound right. She she <laughs> sews things for people and and, you know, gets paid for it. That's – let me get that properly for <laughs> people think I'm living with a prostitute. Um, so that being said, I believe it's a singer um, sewing machine. Okay. And singer is known for making good stuff. This fucking thing, the back, what was what was once an all white plastic, it's all black on the back. Oh. From being <laughs> well. with um, WD-40. And it's not that bad. Hell yeah. So, I mean, you know, I guess that's a, a – she goes – she goes, all right, I'll make the curtain. So I feel bad because she has this now Frankenstein freaking <laughs> sewing machine in the house. So, and I'm like, okay, if you're going to make curtains and, and, you know, and she's like, you know, well, you know, let's go and pick out fabric only because, you know, we're both going to have to live here. So we, let's come to some sort of okay, mutual yeah. agreement. On, you're driving you nuts. So we came, we came across some good stuff. And then I was like, Look it, if you're gonna, I mean, I understand the common area, the living room, you know, I said, my bedroom, I want Star Wars curtains. You know what I'm saying? Because you go and they have, I mean, of course, it's for kids' rooms. Yeah, the right? material, though. <laughs> they got the material at Walmart. It's for man. a five year old room, five year old's room. Intended, but. Yeah, I mean, they have superhero. Uh, Iron Man. And Iron Man, yeah, and Avengers I mean, you know, all, all the kid stuff, you know, and... Thomas the Train yeah. engine and stuff like that. And so, uh, I'll say, why keep on naming all kid stuff? I'll keep going all day long. <laughs> hit saying, me, hit so me. They have, <laughs> they have this stuff. So, I mean, while she's looking at fabrics, I mean, hey, there's Star Wars right there. I want Star Wars. So, I go and I get some Star Wars and I put it up on one of my curtains. So, you know, then things are going back. And, and let me tell you, before you know, and I, you're talking to a guy who used to be married. You're talking, I have baby mama. You know, you know. I mean, I've heard these words before, but I've never used them before. A valance. I had no idea what a valance was until <laughs> about a week ago. And sconces, like you know. I mean, I guess my ex-wife, you know, yeah. hit, hit me to what a sconce is. But guys, guys, generally, unless you're a fucking contractor, right? That are, that are putting in for somebody else. Guys don't generally know no, or least, care what a sconce is or a valance is. Unless they're a feminine male. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, gen- I mean okay. Gen- uh, stereotypical yeah. dude dudes don't, you know. Right. I'm happy. I'll, I'll take a fucking – I'll take a towel and how- hammer it to the, over the window. <laughs> as long as it, the <laughs> neighbors don't see me running around in my underwear. Oh, so, it's covered. Yeah. I just don't want to – I just don't want to get arrested for indecency. So that being said, so I'm like, all right. So, um, you know, she's putting the curtains. And then long story short, she goes, look. She goes, okay, you know, when I put, I put, now I actually put like regular curtains in my room, but she goes, I can make a valance is basically, you know, for the guys out there who don't know what the hell I'm talking about. It's that other little curtain on the top of the curtain. There's a big long curtain and there's like a top that, yeah, kind the of- big long curtain goes, um, horizontal. The valance is the little one at the top that goes vertical. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, like most guys would say, why do you need all that? Extra, oh, you know, don't. It's curtains. just decoration. It, and, it, it, yeah. It, it, it makes a home a home. It accents it. I guess exactly. would be the best way. Is a little flavor. So I have normal curtains and then I have Star Wars balances. Right. With the throw pillows to match. <laughs> and then, well, she, we, I had extra material. Yeah, so she made I the throw pillows. I think that was pillows. great. So now that being said, I mean, ex- if I was to have someone come to my room, I can't. One, like I said, the office is kind of sectioned off now. All right. I can quickly normal and say, look, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Be like, I should like this all the time. Like, Here, I put this uh, Star Wars. Oh no, well, uh, um, you know, I don't know. My, my, you know, like when they have the big. Bro- I'm talking about the, the volunteers when like there's a so kid that, there's like a kid who doesn't have a father or like, yeah. a boy, and they call it the Big Brother or Little Brother program. I'd, you know, I'll say, oh no, 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 I have this Star Wars stuff for my little, <laughs> my quote unquote little brother. You, you know, know what little, I'm so into these days, man? Is storage wars. Oh I'm hooked on a store. Well, they're auctioning off. It's like he don't care what he's doing. He stops what he's doing, and he stands up and he starts watching. He's filing the numbers, and he's filing the numbers, and he's filing the numbers. And then he'll sit there and he'll tell me, dude. He'll be like, 
Jared, Jared should have won that one, mommy. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me with this kid? Because that's the one but, where they they open up the the yeah the, the premises. They actually there's um there's the regular storage wars, which takes place in California. Mm-hmm. Then there's storage wars in Texas, which I have not seen yet. But they also now are running um storage wars in New York, and apparently on board is storage wars Miami. Oh boy! Yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna be watching they, all this shit. Like all these reality shows, they find one but, concept and they work it into oh, the ground. Oh man, but it's so good. Too. Well, Storage Wars, like that one guy quit. Because you know been, you yup. know, you know that dude that I mean, I'm sure you you've had to hear the heard I've like heard, yup before. Because all right, so because basically everyone's heard the yup. I mean the storage places the the premises yeah, the, premises the premises storage that places in California when people don't pay their bill after three months in California, but still when people don't pay their bill after property Robert, of the storage place and they're allowed and to the, auction it and off and the storage place auctions it off to make up the money for the lost people Auctioners. that they go in they, they buy the stuff you know they'll. You know, let's throw out some what easy numbers out there. They'll spend a thousand dollars for it, but if they have three thousand dollars worth of goods in there, right. then they make a profit. Yeah, because what it is is they throw out the door. They're allowed to look in for um, five minutes. Yeah, but you can't can't search. go in, can't touch anything or whatever. So it's very much just standing at the door, looking at what you guess what's in, you know, try to guess what's in there, and then some sometimes they find things. Or or and then that's the thing too. Yeah, the yup dude. Hmm. But um, I guess how the whole thing summed up. Mm-hmm. Was that yes, they're planning stuff, but what they're doing is one, they have an agreement with the people that are auctioning on these things that if they purchase a locker, it's um A and E paying for it. Oh. Okay, so that's the first thing. So yeah. You're, so you're, you're basically hiring people to be personality. That's exactly it. So they're paying for the locker. Uh-huh. And then what they're doing is they're after they're purchasing the locker, mm-hmm. they'll plant an item in there, maybe. You know what I mean? One and it makes money for a more interesting TV show. And this guy, Dave, you know, yo, he tried to sue over the fact. Oh, okay. Because he's got to pay them back. He's got to pay them back. Like, oh, I think it's something like 150 or 200. Like, yeah, they do sometimes plant some stuff in there and everything, but they're paying for the locker. They're doing it after yeah, the fact. Yeah, it's not like this is some regular auction where people could go off the street. But they this tried is... to sue under that premise of back in the, remember back in the late 30s when they had the game show thing where, like, they were talking about, there was that quiz show. That's quiz what it was. Show. I was trying okay, to think yeah. about it. Yeah. There was that quiz show and they were trying to say like the quiz setup. show was ro- uh, ro- uh, rigged. Rigged, rigged uh, which uh, apparently it was. Yeah. But, um, you know, and the whole thing is that the premise of it is that it is a game show and supposed to be a contest and, you know, but Storage Wars is not. Mm-hmm. They've only built it as entertainment for one. There is no real com- – the competition is the auction. Yeah. But they're not messing with any of that. They're messing with everything after the fact. So there's well, no laws I mean, getting it's broken. It's like the people – it's like someone saying – like it's like trying to sue wrestling for being fake. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you know, yeah, of course it's – because I can understand. If this was some legal – I mean, okay, maybe that's not the right word. If this was some like auction where it wasn't personalities and it's any Joe Blow off the street, they would have a case that it's that it's – fake but yeah. um, well, there is some joe schmoes i guess that are oh they do have i think it was do, just but like i guess like a regular you know, pretty stable much of have like thrift stores you know what they do mm-hmm. or um there's that one guy that they chose i forgot what they said that his connection was he had a different connection to one of the guys that was doing the show and they were like hey you know you happen to have a lot of money mm-hmm. this could be something you could get on board with your personality would be great for us so they turned him into an auctioneer and that's mm-hmm. that guy barry but apparently that guy barry is also leaving Oh, like okay. he's not coming back next season, apparently. Well, like, so, yeah, you know, who knows that? But honestly, too, he's one of the dudes who makes the show. So I hope not. I hope well, that he's coming back. I'm, you know, you got the few guys that make that particular one. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, it, you know, it reminds me of all these daytime shows like Jerry Springer and Maury Povich and oh, stuff like love, that. I still love Maury. I mean, you like, know, yeah, the Baby's but, Daddies. Episodes, you know, they have these people on. And you know, like let's just say Jerry Springer, and there's a couple, and you know the uh, the alleged story is you know one guy is sleeping with both girls or whatever. It's not like the people from Jerry Springer are going to go, no, that's not right. You know, it's not like there's, <laughs> they're investigating into it. These people, there's almost an un, unwritten, acknowledged agreement that these people are going to come on the show, be entertaining as hell, give them the most craziest story they can give them. They pro, they promote these people to fight because there was a show called The Springer Hustle on VH1. Right. Yeah. And you see like the people, and that's what it is. I saw that. That was you, a while you, ago, but yeah. You I come on, you know, and, and basically, you know, these are people from, you know, very, very middle parts of America where it's not really, you know, I don't want to cast that kind of stereotype, but you know, you know, people from trailer parks and stuff like that. And the idea is, look, we'll give you a trip to Chicago or more, more in New York City. We'll put you up in a hotel. 
you know what I'm saying? We'll probably pay for your meals and stuff like that. Yeah. And then their job is to be entertaining. It's your job to, you know, get the crowd all riled up and cheering and all this other shit, you oh. know? And it's not like I said, it's not like the, and it, yeah, you could say it's a setup, but I mean, it's entertainment. It's supposed to be entertainment. How is that any different than? Somebody who can sing on American Idol, you know what right. I'm saying? I mean, you know, and, and shit, you know, American Idol, one of the biggest ones, you know, all the people like from the first couple of years were all like people that already had some sort of connection, like Daughtry, like oh, really? Daughtry and... See, I uh, didn't watch American Idol, so I really, I mean, like I watched the one season that I got down to Clay Aiken and... um. Ruben Stutters. Ruben Stutters. <laughs> Which isn't that sad too? It's like it was between Clay Aiken and Ruben Stutters. Ruben Stutters won, but I had to think. What was Ruben Stutters' name? I knew Clay Aiken's right <laughs> off the top of my head, but so that just goes yeah. to show you how much that like, pays off too. If I'm not mistaken, Kelly Clarkson, you know, who just loves to scream. Yeah, I mean, like but, seriously, every song I listen to of her, it's just it's her. She's but she screaming. already had like she's she screaming. Basically she's basically like, had representation. Power. She already had like representation. Oh, you know, the the gist of the show is these are people off the street. No, yeah. and Daughtry. Daughtry, before he got famous, he was on, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of this. Yeah, technically, you can still technically be an amateur and do like, you know, being a, a gun for hire where they, you know, they hire people for voices and, and well, stuff like that. What's the one that Howard Stern's on? Didn't they have a girl that auditioned on there that like used to work for Michael Jackson or some shit like that? Possibly. You I'm know, I, sure I'm not, I heard I'm not familiar with that story, but I mean, it, it totally I'm, makes sense. This was like a legitimate auction in a public place, you know, because I mean, whenever you listen to the, like, I, I always, like, when you hear the radio, you know, I usually, it's usually in radio ads where you hear you know public auto auction you know it's always like right. it's always cars and stuff like that. now that's different if they hit, if they set up cameras in there and there was a plant oh it's there if technically it's really i mean like well no it's not really technically their property because they may have the agreement that they're buying it for them but mm-hmm. what's well, like I, I mean they fund the property and from my understanding too they actually get to keep the funds from the property that they yeah, you know, it's all a and setup. Do these people really think that, like, they always just know, like, oh, well, this thing's pretty rare and I've never seen it before, but I know just the person to go take it to to get it <laughs> appraised. And of course, it's like some kind of character type person. Yeah. It's oh, all- yeah. Here's a, we have our <laughs> Civil War expert and they have some guy come in and, oh, well, yeah. this is. Oh, look, he's in a Civil War yeah. uniform. And you see and- these engravings? These are from, you know, the so and so, you know, yeah. some other, uh, you know, metal smith or whatever. And it's, you know, like, this are my, like, like, uh, you know, I read an article, you know, their budget for the show, each episode is 12 grand. Okay. That's nothing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, what they're putting into the cars, you know, 12 grand, that's what 12 yeah, grand will true. get you. Yeah. You know, if you're just a Joe Blow on the street, 12 grand is a lot of fucking money to put into a show. Oh, hell yeah. You know, and how much and money is- And a car that was falling apart, too. All those cars were falling <laughs> apart that I ever saw. And and how much money is you know? MTV making yeah, as they a can- pure dude, profit? they did that one that was an ice cream van. You know that guy's probably still making profit off that <laughs> thing because they did a good job, man. Yeah, I mean, this is what I'm saying is that they make these shows for dirt cheap. So, okay, yeah. you give a guy, you know, even if you throw out, and that was how many years ago from Pimp My Ride? That was, you know, let's just say you, you drop, let's, you know, let's adjust for inflation and say, you know, they're dropping 20 grand on a ep- one episode. 20 grand, that's, that's, that's cheap. Uh, for a nationally yeah. syndicated show, you know, so what? You give up, you give away, you know, you, you set up a, a, a fake auction. For like, sh- you know, storage wars by the time it's all signed up. Because, I mean, some of those storage lockers do go for like thousands. Yeah, yeah and just the like, fact that we know the name, <laughs> like, you could say Storage Wars, and even though I've, I think I've, I've seen like one or two episodes a long time ago. Right. You know, even I know the name Storage Wars, so that proves that. Yeah. A, is it Annie? Is Annie, it, yeah. yeah the money makers, runs makers. this town. That's yeah. their slogan. Oh my God! You know, and all the, the Pawn good. Stars and 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 was it? There's yeah. Pawn Stars, and there's there's another Pawn one, and then there's. Isn't there? Oh, what's the hell? I've seen a commercial for one where it's like it's a pawn shop, but it's like in a real ghetto area. Oh, you know, I yeah. Forgot. There's there's a few of the pawn ones now. I just I don't really watch them too much. I've seen them before, but I don't really watch them too much. My yeah. mom loves American Pickers and that kind of stuff yeah, too. Well, you that know, stuff is you know it's it's it's. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's business wise, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it's it's dirt cheap to make. You know what I'm saying for any Joe Blow on the street, twelve grand is a lot of money. You know what I'm saying, or now twenty grand, or whatever the number. And you know, and then these these companies are, you know, they're laughing all the way to the bank. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you don't have to hire writers, you don't have to hire, you know, set designers and all this stuff. You know, because you throw a couple grand into some bullshit uh, storage locker. You right. know, so you know, it's 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 it's, it's a brilliant idea. You know, 
for and apparently really so, cause now they're about to have a fourth fan, um, you know, four spinoff <laughs> off of it. I mean, come on, you know, Real Housewives. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna have a Storage Wars network, you know, Real Housewives. Yeah, that that one's been spinned off too much, though. That's one that just needs to go away. Yeah, and they stick them on yeah. a show. They they you know, and it's one of those things where people know that if there's nowadays in the whole uh subculture of reality stars, you know, if you start a fight, you're gonna be famous. All the most yeah. famous people are known for being ball breakers and, and personalities. Even though they're not directly telling them, hey, be an, be a ball breaker, be a personality, do the people already know. Right. You know, oh, if I create it's a scene the personalities that and I start about, fights with everybody. I got one for you actually. You know, remember Puck? Puck, yeah. From the real world? Mm-hmm. Okay, how can you forget him, right? One of the original reality yeah, stars who was over a twenty years ago. Exactly. Over twenty years ago. Dude went in for, um, last year, got popped with a domestic violence. Um, yeah, and he oh, ended shit. up going, um, he got sentenced for 300 days. Mm-hmm. Went in in November of 2012, right? Mm-hmm. Now, that's not 300 days. Mm-hmm. He's out of jail, right? Mm-hmm. He's back in jail. That's oh, for man. what? Domestic violence. Domestic- I mean, you know, just. Yeah. To, you know. Actually, they say her mom mm-hmm. is, um, not allowed <laughs> to have oh. therapy sessions. Oh, boy. So we can pretty much understand a little bit about why Lindsay might be a little yeah. bit Lindsay. There's a certain there's, there's a, certain a little stereotype bit of understanding because they're they're from Long Island. Yeah, the 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 Lindsay Lohan okay. family, and and you know there's a certain, I was like you would know more about that Long Island stuff. Yeah, than when I you got would, that, but, you know, there's there's a certain yeah. you know party yeah, culture where point. it's it's you know the you know the moms you know the 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 moms are you know for the lack of you know functioning alcoholics. I mean you know they they, yeah. you know, they spend the whole day getting sloshed. You know, for, you know, however they have the money coming in, you know, if the, if the husband is a contractor or, you know, some, you know, owns a business or whatever. And the guy got with the girl because she's pretty, you know what I'm saying? And so she's like the, the wife, you know, and I hate to put it like that, but you know, the wife never worked a hard, never worked a real day of work in her whole life. You know what I'm saying? They spend all day getting drunk and, you know, and partying. Then when they raise their daughters, you know, they're too busy thinking they're their daughter's friends and not a parent, parent. You know right. what I'm saying? And then they, they wonder why the kid gets all fucked up, you know? So it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a cycle, you know? So yeah. Dina Lohan was definitely one of those, like, you know, and then, you know, they were pimping out their kid, you know, Lindsay Lohan's been making movies since she was like seven or eight or whatever. So, you know, they were, you know. Yeah, they started her up early. Actually, I think it's even know, before so that, too, that they had her going on there. Going back to um, people out of jail. Uh-huh. Did you hear what happened with George Zimmerman after he got out of jail? I heard. I Did just, you hear about I this? just read that this this, this this a couple hours ago. Shit's crazy. Yeah, George he, Zimmerman. It was seventeenth. Okay, I got the dates here. It was the seventeenth. He pulled two adults out from an overturned SUV after the driver lost control. Yeah, isn't that crazy? No, now let's just say he just no. acquitted, got acquitted of murder. It was the thirteenth. Yeah, because I made sure to write these dates down because I wanted to make sure I didn't. Miss yeah, just a couple dates, of days know? later. Yeah, now, now let's just you know. Let, I mean, obviously, a huge, huge, um, you know, negative side to this, and let's let's just forget about that right mm-hmm. now. Even though I, I don't want to sound the wrong way. Had this, had yeah, he, case aside, we'll just yeah, put the whole case aside you know, and crime he, aside. And there's this guy named George. Let's just say <laughs> random guy, and he pulls two people from an overturned SUV. Let me tell you, he'd be on the news and people would be talking, oh, this hero. And he, you know, he was there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like the media is so quick to like, and, and don't get me wrong. Obviously you should, people should go out there and save lives or, you know, if, you, oh, if, if, yeah. if you feel that it's safe enough for you to intervene, definitely go and intervene. And, 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 you know, obviously, you know, good Samaritan or whatever, you yeah. know, had, had the first part of how we got to know his name never existed, he'd be a hero right now. He'd be all oh, this and guy. And that would be the only reason why he's on the news, you probably. Know, yeah. And, you know, let's, you know, let's not forget, you know, that, you know, that it, there's a connotation that, you know, he's a racist and he's this and this and that. And, you know, he was, he's a bully and he was looking for a fight or whatever. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that's my opinion. I'm just saying right. is that there's now, you know, it's so weird how one day you're a hero, one day you're a villain, and then and the next day you're, you're pulling dudes from the freaking overturn us. Because I wonder, like, if, if I ever, like, I have EMT training, yeah, right now. Let's just say I was in a situation and I saved someone. Now, mind you, I've actually performed CPR on someone and kept them alive till hey. the EMTs came out. Props. You know, I mean, you know, not that I'm on the news or anything like that, you know, but Let's you know, right on. I would be a quote unquote hero if that got on the news. Now, what if, like, I, I did get, and then they go back and they listen to this podcast. 
He's, he's a miserable bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> who the hell is this guy? You yeah. know, like, you know, the same guy like, who. Fuck you, that life saving <laughs> son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one day I'd be a hero, the next day, you know, like, you know, and, and who knows this? If, let's just say I did save someone's life or something like that. You know, copies of my book would be selling and, and people would be downloading the podcast. And people would be buying click and hits like, and all I'd this be stuff. Super rich. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm already a built in celebrity. I just need a reason to get on the news. I love but, I mean, that being said, you know, I would, I, you know, I would love to have something like that. He's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to see here. Talk about jerks. Patterson, our ex-government, might be running for Congress. Does Well, do we have That's Wiener, just... Anthony Wiener. I know. They're all making a comeback, man. You got Spitzer, you got... But you know what? The thing is, too, even Hooker aside, man, I love... He was... Now, at the time, I was working for the state right when he came into office. Yeah. And he was actually, you know, and I've said it before in past episodes, I was a correction officer, a state correction officer, New York State correction officer. And, you know, because after years of after, you know, Pataki had screwed over the correction officer so bad that, you know, that by the time Spitzer got in office, he like, kind of screwed over you know, the state so bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where, like, you know, Pataki just beat us up. It's like, I was job and mm-hmm. now fuck <laughs> you know like what the fuck <laughs> you know it's always the guys i mean like because yeah it's him we and everything it's always the guys just i don't know what it is i mean you guys just lose control when you start thinking with that because you know what it is when you have that much power like anthony weiner or or uh elliot spitzer there is when you have like this above the law world like when you you know and once again be kind of being a correction officer yeah when you get to this one part where you can't get in trouble i mean obviously nowadays people do get in trouble and and you should get in trouble if you're doing if you're breaking the law yeah. here you know you're the well, governor of the state makes you it shouldn't so be breaking much easier to get into trouble too i mean just think about how yeah, like well, 10 the, years ago how- built this country carnegie and 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 rockefeller and 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 all these guys you know astor going on forever it's just, Back then, yeah, it Thomas wasn't Jefferson. Exposed. Thomas Jefferson. They um said has had a child with a he one of the slaves, slaves, you know, and and, and yeah, I mean, there was they a comedian who made a joke. He goes, "When was the last time you met a Jefferson or a Washington who who wasn't black?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How many white people do you know that have the last name Jefferson I've or Washington? And I don't, that. I don't, you know, I, I'm not. That's funny. Perpetrating us, they're a racist joke. But it's there true. is no racism on the show. Period. <laughs> yeah. Everybody should probably realize that. Right now. Just, it's all love. You know, it really I just is all love. Preface that, but you know, nowadays. Jefferson and Washington is a predominantly black name. <laughs> like, yeah. Know, what was the last white guy you saw with the last name Washington <laughs> or Jefferson? Yeah, you got you a know. good point. So, yeah, so these guys, you know, you got a good point. There. Yeah, these guys were doing horrible. Yeah, staying horrible on things. that. Corfu. Um, you know, that's where Darien Lake is. Corfu. Corfu. Corfu is the name of the town that Darien Lake's in. Okay, okay. Darien, and just you know, they have got quite the drama going on there right now because mm-hmm. the judge and the county clerk. Who mm-hmm. also happened to be related. So judge's daddy, county the clerk's daughter. County, clerk, uh-huh. county clerk's got sixty one charges against her. The judge has got three because they were stealing money. Ooh. Yeah, they got caught stealing money. So they got caught stealing money over two years period of time is what the audit's starting to expose and everything. So charges have gotten pressed. They went to court today, they gotta go back, you know. It'll wow. be a drag down for probably a little bit or a little shuffle it through that's fast. Saying, once you, that's what I'm saying. Once it's you get, crazy. Once you get like this above the law mentality, right. it's but it falls you know, in line absolute right with power that. corrupts absolutely. You know, it's like there's once you get a per, once you, it's very easy. You know, like we get, I mean, a lot of people, they, oh, the congressmen, they're sold out by all the companies and stuff like that. I said, would you, would you be turning down thousands and thousands of dollars when you're trying to get one dollars? Yeah, I'm trying to like any. I don't know anybody who's ever had a job that, you know, if you're a waiter or you're a bartender, you know, money comes from tipping. If you have a regular mm-hmm. customer that comes in every day and they throw a couple dollars your way, when you see them next time, you have a little extra pep in your step to take care of that customer. Right. How is that any different than? Hundreds of thousands of dollars for Exxon or for, you know, or all these, you know, or uh, what's the one that well, that spilled all the oil? You know, BP. Yeah, BP. All of a sudden, now there's a problem. And right. It's like, it's, I mean, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's what the hell's going on is, you know, the money perpetrates money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, you know, I don't think there's a big conspiracy. I don't think 
the there's there's people with money it's trying to hold everybody people down. People sell out. That's what it is. People are keeping themselves done. up. <laughs> I'm not trying to hold you down, but I'm getting money to do what I'm doing, so, so I'm going to do it. Get an office. I'm sorry if you keep got on fucked. working and get more money. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, How we do it on time? I don't know. We're way past the hour. Oh, mark, really? So. You know, I did want to give a no, mention, no, though. Yeah. Real the quick. People, they haven't heard us for a month. Oh, so. I know, right? <laughs> um, but locally, a lot of people probably found out by now, too, that, like, the owner. Just and he just, the that's people. what thing. He just, he deserves a shout out. I yeah, really Aaron's think. Alley you know? is, was a local, very hippy dippy kind of a place you know which which is so weird because you know it, it was on monroe avenue monroe. it is on monroe avenue and, and monroe it avenue is has pretty really much like the original little like hippie shop like there that like you know stuck around as far as like it was it, it survived in a time where that wasn't the popular thing so and they just always have had a very good community grasp i mean they've always been very active in the community they've always been part of that local community um, they've also been very active in like the merchants association and everything and um Yeah, I used to love here. going out. Yeah, he was also he was a music promoter too and everything. But I mean they did they just so much community stuff and everything and he was only forty seven years old. I mean like that's really Holy shit. Yeah, only forty seven years that. old. So I mean like yeah, that's pretty it's a pretty early loss too, you know. It's yeah. definitely a good one. You know, they say only the good die young. Well, he was definitely a good one, and unfortunately, he died young. So, wow, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that, he was that young. Jesus Christ! Yeah, man. exactly. So, I just think that kind of. I used to love going bit. to Aaron's Alley, and if I'm not mistaken, now the ones you know, I've only moved to Rochester a couple of years ago, yeah. but I believe that was one of the places where, like, before the internet got big, that was like a place you can get like Ticketmaster tickets and stuff like that. Was that? Is that? Is that kind of ring they a bell? They used to have know. tickets there, but I don't know if it was like Ticketmaster stuff or not. Well, because, I mean, sure. the reason I bring that up is, I mean... House of Guitars is where I used to go. Like, that's the thing, you know, oh, so... The internet was the yeah. internet. You of had course, to go also, to, it's a trip to stand in line at Yeah, you had to go and, and, and go to certain stores. And there was yeah. a place I used to go to in Chinatown in Manhattan where if you walked by this place, you wouldn't... Give it, you wouldn't even think there's a computer in there, you know what I'm saying? Like, it looked like you know, the beginning of the movie Gremlins, like where he buys, <laughs> like, you know, like it's a shop Chinese, where, like, where like yeah. jade statues and Buddha statues and you know, like golden That's how I dragons. Feel like walking into half our Chinese restaurants <laughs> that we got here, you know, you got like the royal dynasty or. Um, taste of China or whatever, and that's, I always feel like that when I'm walking into. I always and think that's like my first initial thought is gremlins. <laughs> and right be- before, okay. that, it was always you know I always used to get good seats. I mean yeah. nowadays, you know everyone you just go you should you could grab your phone and go online and buy tickets. But yeah, yeah like when because some I remember somebody telling me that Aaron's Alley was the place back in the day before the internet where that was the place you would go because they tickets? had the computer to buy tickets you know i oh, no like kidding. i think they abandoned it a long time ago but. yeah i used to stand in line at the hog and then after a while i used to go to um try to think which store it was i want to say it was um whatever the macy's is now whatever it used to be but um in a Ronaquay mall because nobody really knew there mm-hmm. had it in like the customer service section and i found that out and i was like oh wait a minute here <laughs> and it's air conditioning. yeah so <laughs> i started going there too that's kind of like you know i guess like the start of me growing up maybe <laughs> you know and um also i mean for some reason just speaking of untimely deaths um cory monteith all oh, right the glee the star guy of glee you know mixing Drug his drugs overdose. and stuff yeah, like that that's a shame though that young and that's you know it is i mean like you know, there is the part of me, like the hater part of me. Oh, this pretty guy had a you know a fucking right. world knocking on his door, and I don't. And you're dumb, and, and you're getting all this money, and, and you people want to party invincible. with you. You know, you don't realize the the damage you're doing on your body, and you know, you, you, he's probably he was probably. I mean, once again, I'm totally speculating. He's probably surrounded by people that said yes to everything. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like an Elvis Presley kind of character. And not that, I mean, not that he was that big, but you know, when you have this party culture that's yeah. like, you know, party, 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 you know, you just, you're going to do these drugs and you know, you right. think you're going to, that's like, you know, hating on the pretty boy. And I'll tell you the truth. I didn't even know his name until it happened. And then I was just like, Oh, you know, like, okay, kid from Glee. Yeah. And it just, like, and that was the thing too. I thought he was even younger than that too. I didn't realize he was actually as old as he was, but I should have kind of figured that after like, you know, being an old 90210 person. Oh yeah, of course. Oh yeah. These people in their freaking 30s you know, playing yeah, teenagers. Playing, yeah i should have kind of i should have guessed <laughs> but um i mean yeah to be completely honest i didn't know who the guy was there's a thing too like you know on this show too you had Kristen, and Kristen was like the reality tv and 
Yeah, you know, she, like gossip, celebrity gossip is like that. I'll tell you anything. I mean, I, I love the s- sun. Like, I love all that British stuff and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm definitely not talking about the royal, bla- you know, the royal baby. The royal. Yeah, just because, you know, I mean, everybody else is going to be overly talking it. So everyone's going to. Because, you know, I mean, people are going to be over talking the crap out of us. Anytime anything happens to the royal family, you know, they fart sideways and all of a sudden it's just like the major. News. But, I mean, if, I mean, I, I, I don't want to get into it, but wouldn't it. <laughs> Am I not mistaken that he's going to be the next king of England? If, no, if... he's third. Oh, he's, he's third, third in line. Oh, okay. Sorry, okay. I was under yeah. the misconception that. No, he's... you still got you got Charles, you got um, William, and then you got now baby. Oh, and okay. then you got Harry. Okay. Which is actually the point of that Lion King picture that I posted earlier today on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I posted the picture on Facebook, like right after the announcement came out that it was a boy and all that stuff. I posted a picture on Facebook and I was like, hey, check it out. It's the first royal, you know, baby pics. Mm-hmm. And what it was, was it was Rafiki with the little Lion King and the <laughs> Lion King and the Simba. wife in the background. And then you got Scar underneath, like looking all scowly and <laughs> stuff like that. And I was like, this is so fitting for the situation because <laughs> poor Harry just got bounced out to fourth as a third. But, oh, and those people live a charmed life, you know. Is oh, it- yeah, I know. I know. But still, I mean, you know, at least Harry joined their, you know, he ended up joining their um, armed forces. So that's good and everything. But, like, I like to read The Sun more for, like, just their celebrity gossip and everything like that, too. I don't know. I just find it very interesting to see, like, what's going on. Like, mm-hmm. I listen to a lot of, um, I don't listen to a lot of our local radio i like to listen to like things like i you know the morning show that i like to favor and listen to is i like to listen to kevin and bean now mm-hmm. you know i stream that yeah because well <laughs> i mean just you know for the for Beth i mean because over here no it's um because i you know on the oh, light, ours is East lame. what do we got we got scott spazano oh yeah you know he reminds me of that dude from you know remember will farrell and sherry um sherry and terry they used to do that like combination the cheerleaders the cheerleaders yeah yeah <laughs> scott spazano reminds me of will farrell I kind of, I have a soft just, spot in my heart for Brother Weeze. I have to, I'm he, not going to lie. I will tell you one thing. One time, it was when we were kids, it was me um, and a few of my friends, we went to wrestling. Mm-hmm. And we had very good seats, actually. And we're sitting there, and all of a sudden we realized, like, oh shit, Brother Weeze. And, you know, like, there's a couple people sitting behind us and stuff. He was very nice to us. You know, there's like, you know, we were little kids and everything. Then was also, I mean, like, not little, little kids. We were old enough to be there by ourselves without an adult. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, teens. But, um, you know, we were a little starstruck, you know, for being kids and everything like that. And he was very, very cool to us. Yep. Actually, if I record, um, excuse me, if I remember correctly, I think he brought us all a pretzel. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, he's a very nice dude. And yeah. part of his charm is that he's out of, he's out of touch because the whole, now, yeah, the one thing about Brother Louise that I had, that, that has happened recently and, and, and I've been in Rochester long enough to understand. Like right now, he has a character, he has the two people on the show, uh, Paul Guglielmo and, uh, whatever, Ju- Cirque du Soleil, whatever the fuck her last that name girl? is. Yeah, yeah, Cirque, who I actually I had interactions on Twitter with and she's a fucking bitch. And then he has these other people on his show. And let me tell you, she's a fucking idiot. And as much as, and Paulie G, Paulie Paul Guglielmo, not that he's not an idiot. I don't want to use the, cause she is an idiot because she, I think she chooses to be a fucking idiot. Oh, Paulie's okay. just, he's been, he's a bit sheltered because like he'll talk about stuff. And, and like, like part of me was like, shit, I should be on that show because, you know, I, I'm a little more hipper than <laughs> they are, you know, and, right. but that's kind of like the gist. And I've noticed that I've re- realized that he's always had like co-hosts that are younger than him. Yeah. And he's kind of like, you know, he's the, he's it the older guy. Was, and then, you know, and it kind of, you know, then there's, and now, I mean, I don't know if Paulie and uh, the Cirque du Soleil, whatever the fuck her last name is, <laughs> um, you know, I don't know if they're supposed to be re- representing the young people, but I don't want them to represent me because because she's a fucking dummy. Right. And, and he's a you know I li- I like him. He's charming and actually I've had you know, yeah there. Rover's morning Gl- Rover is such a wannabe Howard Stern. Oh. Like he's, they're trying so and they're trying. What I don't like about the show is that because every now and then the show gets serious and when the show gets serious, right word, but when they when every now and then the show will get into very serious territory. And actually, everyone on that show, I like when they're being themselves. Okay. They purposely try to dumb down their show, you know, and they, and they, you know, I mean, I can talk on the show and I can obviously be who I am. And, yeah. And, and yeah, I get a little, I get, you know, I'm probably not this out in, on a public place, you know, like I'm the clown, but you know, I don't, I'm not trying to dumb it You're down for anybody. You're more comfortable here, I would yeah, say. I, I, you know, I speak yeah. up, you know, when, when you see, when you listen to the show, when the times when it's gotten real serious and all of a sudden they have like, They'll have a real conversation and like, like, I, I can dig it. 
But then, like, half the other times, like, it's almost like they're dumbing it down for, like, the average person. Like, they don't want to, like, you got to yeah. play it to, you know, you have to act like everyone's a fucking, everyone's yeah. a dummy. Because, hey, maybe half the audience out there is, like, maybe they're offended they're by, sure. by, you know, by s- smart radio. You know, saying, like, oh, I don't want to listen to this. You know, like, I don't want to listen to just smart stuff. You know, I want to hear. Yeah. It doesn't always I want to hear, you know, jokes. I want to hear, uh, you know, you know, there's a whole guy. There's a character on this show named Jeffrey. And there's no way this person can exist in real life. You know what I'm saying? And he's a guy right. and they talk about, you know, he has, you know, brown stains in his underwear, skid marks and all this other stuff. And, you know, there's no way no one's that stupid and, right. and is a fully functioning grown adult who has a wife and kids. There's no way. I, I, right. <laughs> I know there's stupid people, you know, and it'd be one thing like, you know, people with developmental disabilities, to use that word, they, they try. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, a yeah. person, you know, if you're if you're that smart and you're playing stupid, then there's a problem. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like I that agree that, that I don't you know. It's just one of those things where, and it's 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 almost insulting to my intelligence to to try to like downplay. It. You know, Rover is supposed to be like the misogynist guy, and he hates women. And then you got you know. uh you know, the other guys, like, they, they act like jocks, like, you know. But then, like, I've heard real conversations where they get deep and they get real, they've had real conversations. And it was like, well, they now, you know, like, then you're going to. do that all the time? Yeah. And it's like, then you see them, then they go back to, you know, and they act like they don't know what certain things are. Like, you know, like, they'll talk about something on TV. Like, oh, I don't watch that show or whatever. And it's like, yeah. oh, come on. You, you're you so playing into, like, this stereotype, you know, like. And it's just, I don't know, it bothers me. It just, I don't know. So that's just, you know, my two cents on doing it. But actually, radio Excuse people me. don't get paid very well, from what I understand. You know what I'm saying? From it's what not I like, understand, they don't either. Yeah, I'm really good morning show because they wouldn't continue to pay them what they were making. And, oh, God, what was it? It was on um, Carl, Carlson McKenzie, I think it was called, or Carl McKenzie. Oh, okay, yeah. Sounds I don't familiar. know. They were awesome. Like, that was a really good morning show. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like, explaining that, like, yeah, they were off the air oh, yeah. because they couldn't get their contracts together and yeah. sucked, you know? And, like, okay, like, I know one thing I've, you know, that I've gotten from our personal conversations is you're a bit more conservative than I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm a lot more Democrat. And, and, and not, and I'm not going to get into, we're not no, going to get into a political no, conversation. Right. We're fine. But, like, you know, you listen to, like, I've I'm listened. a lot more liberal than a lot of people think, though, too. So, I mean, there you go there. Well, well I'm you just know, saying, you you know, remember, me, I was, I'm like, like, married to a heart... God, if you would have been around for the freaking oh, who was it? It was um George Bush and um John Kerry. That uh-huh. freaking election. Uh-huh. I was married to such a hardcore fucking Republican. It was so goddamn annoying. <laughs> I mean, like I loved the man dearly, but I seriously just wanted to choke him sometimes because it was like we could not go out to dinner. We could not do anything without any, you know, it, and it didn't even matter. Like, it could be just me and him, and all of a sudden it was just like, bam, he's spitting out more politics. It's like, well, it's and I used to tell him, you got to take a break. You've got to. I mean, like, seriously, for sanity even, you yeah, know? I don't, like, I listen to these conservative talk shows, and it's not, it's, I mean, I when I scan through the channels, like, as soon as, right. the, as soon as you know, Brother Weeze goes to commercial, I have such a short attention span that I just start flipping through the channels. And every now and then, I'll get caught up on a, a conservative talk show and only yeah. because like you know you catch for a second and you're like okay you know you'll hear and like you'll hear part of the argument and you're like okay this is i can get down with this like uh, you know right. it sounds interesting i want to listen but then like i'm crazy. guessing I've you're had friends like glenn that back maybe well like glenn, glenn back, back i think is kind of very similar to what you're describing yeah it's just well like i mean and actually no let me let me, let me strike that because there are people that crazed because i know people that crazed yeah. and actually we have friends that are that crazy <laughs> uh, you know, i don't want to get into particulars <laughs> but that being said it's like you know, like, holy shit. Okay, we get it. You don't like Obama. Mm-hmm. You know, give it a fucking... Ra- I love Star Wars. Am I going to spend the whole fucking hour of Two Strangers on podcast talking about Darth Vader? You know? Yes, yeah. I, I love Star Wars. I love DC Comics. Um, You know... I understand that I I can't sit here for an hour and talk about DC Comics. No. If I did that every episode, I would I would take my own fucking life. I I I fucking <laughs> no put a bullet in my that, mouth yeah. in my fuck. I put a gun in my mouth and blow my fucking brains out. You know these. Thank his name. I'm picturing his face like so clearly, and I can't. The SNL guy that turned into oh, the Al college. Franken. Thank you, yes, Al Franken. <laughs> I'm like I'm picturing his face. Like, and it's funny because I I mean I I I Dennis Miller. 
And then, like, he he's hit just, a switch one I'll day. I say, he's became, just, like, all of a sudden, he just, like, went, boop, boop, yeah, and just totally, yeah. blew my mind. And it's so funny. I remember because, when he started showing up on Fox News, too. I was like, what is Dennis Miller doing and they were, here? They, you know, when you go back to around the time of Dennis, because Al Franken was always kind of like a writer on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And then Dennis Miller came on. And anyone who anyone who was really part of the, the, the weekend update was always like a head writer. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, right. So it's so weird that at one point, Al Franken and Dennis Miller worked hand in hand. You know, I mean, I'm obviously, you don't have to get along with someone to work with them, you know, but yeah, it's I've just, been there before. you know, it's so weird how they both, they freaking split to the opposite sides of the spectrum where right. one is like ultra conservative, one is ultra Democrat. And it's just like, oh my God, you know, and I love both of them. But even both of them irritate the shit out of me because Al Franken, you know, and even though I would be, I would consider myself more liberal Democrat, right. even that shit. And, and cause I used to listen to Janine Garofalo show. There was another, there was another show called, um, uh, morning sedition, you fucking up a wall. Like even that was like, you can't, yes. Okay. Uh, whatever. If you don't like George Bush, you, you know, but like Jesus Christ, you can't plant every single problem, you, you know, right. shit, you know, I burnt my toast this morning because George Bush. Yeah. <laughs> like, I used on, to joke around that too, George. Yeah. <laughs> you know? God, you remember when Katrina hit and they had that telethon on TV afterwards and everything. And then there's re- Mike Myers. And Kanye West. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and George Bush sudden, don't like black George people. George Bush takes poor Mike Myers. I will never forget. He looks like such a deer and caught in the headlights. I, my hands got, um, I would say about three weeks later, yeah. I was with my saw Mike Myers in the street. Hand to oh, God, this nice. is made, right lightning strike me if I'm lying. Well, that kind of shit would happen in here. I was in my car. I, my friend, I believe it was my boy Andy, who loves Mike Myers. My, my nice. boy Andy is a diehard hockey fan. You know, he's dressed up like fucking uh, Austin Powers a couple of times for Halloween. Um, his sister used to call him Garth. That was, you know, he, he looked like Garth because he had long hair and the glasses, except he had black hair instead of blonde hair. Oh, okay. You know, uh, very much reminded me of the Garth character, you know, but I mean, just Wayne's like World. Persona? And, yeah, like, oh, persona. Okay. you know, saying this guy is a diehard, um, Mike Myers fan. So Andy's in my, my passenger seat. And I think we had another friend in the back. I want to say it was my boy Raphael. Long story short, we see Mike Myers standing on the corner. And like, of course, my boy Andy goes fucking nuts. Oh, right. shit, look, it's Mike Myers. And then I look at Mike Myers. And I'm like, I want to think of, I wanted to say something to get his attention. And I said, Mike, George Bush don't like Mike Myers. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, <laughs> he, he had the most stunned look. And I made, and my boy Andy could attest to it. And, I, and my boy Raphael too. <laughs> It was so funny because it had to be like maybe three weeks after that, and it was still like you know in the public consciousness. Yeah, uh, he was so like like you could tell he kind of like jumped back just for the fact that someone was screaming at him. (laughs) So that was one of my brushes with uh, that's awesome with celebrity, and it's it's funny like my boy Andy like I've and you know my boy Andy hanging out with him like we went to we went to the Howard Stern movie premiere and like with Uh Andy we met Marilyn Man lead singer well the if you want to call a singer the the guy from cypress hill yeah uh carmen electra you know andy i always have and then my boy Raphael. i've actually um when i when i got to meet um but yeah my my boy andy and like i said it was so funny because you know it was andy that saw him you yeah know what i'm saying and the mike myers and then of course you know he kind of sticks out because you know he has the big buster brown haircut and, <laughs> and uh you know so it was just you know one of those things but i like I I had I knew exactly what to say. Hey, Mike, <laughs> like black people. And he kind of, like I said, he he kind of his head That's actually kind awesome. of went back a little bit because he was just like because I scream, you know, I got a big mouth. Yeah, and you know, but and he kind of smiled. What? Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like the times I decide to come out of my shell. You know, you know? <laughs> when it's time to make someone else uncomfortable. Which they have, we like, man, we are way over. Way over. Yeah, it's time to roll. Um. So we should probably let them know what the deal is here. So we're probably are we still trying to do like we're, two or I would right now. I mean, I don't want to put anything in stone because we never really put any. We never put anything officially in stone with, the, with the other iteration because yeah. I don't want to jinx it. But I would like it to be two episodes a week. All right, so we're gonna pretty much we're gonna try to record. We had talked about maybe trying to record on mondays and thursdays and putting out episodes so that people can expect them on tuesdays and fridays as opposed i I don't want to jinx it system (laughs) well i mean you don't have to jinx this it's not jinx like you know what we will i'm going to be going to florida for two weeks in august so like we might have to like figure something out like maybe we can do a call in hey 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 um you know good one too i have have, um john bogdanov who 
for people you know for for people who aren't diehard comic book fans basically was one of the artists that were involved in the quote unquote death of Superman back in 1993 he was amongst other things a co-creator of the character Steel and you know the the Steel is most popularly known uh, by people as Shaquille O'Neal did a movie. Please don't let that movie. Uh, <laughs> everything else, you know, uh, you know. They so, have a tendency to do sometimes. So as of actually tomorrow, probably about in about fifteen hours or so, I'll be doing an interview with him. Hey. Um, maybe that I'm pretty sure that episode will probably come out on Thursday. All right, um, so we'll do that one, and then next week we'll start up with the two with us. Yeah, or, you know, and then I also... Plus, also, my roof won't be getting worked on, too. Like, we had to record <laughs> late tonight because all of a sudden I remembered it was like, oh, crap, they're working on yeah, my roof today, roof and... and- yeah, yeah, somehow tearing down a roof doesn't seem to match with radio recording. <laughs> yeah. And Don't then know hopefully, why. Um, you know, another interview, which I actually got a chance to meet this gentleman in person, uh, Jody Schaefer, hey. co-creator of cartoons, Megas XLR. Um, he he was art supervisor for um, Motor City, which was on Disney XD. Right now, there's a promotion going on for Captain Crunch, and it's actually they're really funny. He, there's these little bits on YouTube, and they're made sp- ex- exclusively for YouTube oh, okay, uh, for, viral. for Captain yeah. Crunch, which he's you know he's he's the art director on that. He's working on a project called White Shadow, which is kind of interesting. White Shadow, which was the name of a show in the seventies, but I don't, they're not related. The White Shadow was about like a, a white guy. Yeah, I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. wow. But White Shadow. So he's working on a project called White Shadow. So I'm probably gonna bu- bug him about that. Jody Schaefer. Um, he's done. Uh, there's a if you go on Crackle.com, there was a sh- little mini show called Issues, which was about it was a comedy about superheroes um, going. That and sounds it was, good. It was a live action um, therapist, and then the art, the cartoons were nice. voices for the. Con- it was it was only like six episodes, but I mean it's fucking funny. So, so Jody, Jody Schaefer, Schaefer, he's the art director, director and, and of course, course my favorite cartoon of like all time, Megas XLR. Okay. So you know between John Bogdanov and and Jody Schaefer, which only comes to prove people that if you harass people online enough, they will do your show. So please don't <laughs> harass people, people online. Harass we us. do not need that liability. Well, harass, okay, maybe harass. We do not suggest that you harass people harass online. Is not the right word. That I mean, as in reaching I, out to pre- people. I'm a fanboy. I am a fan of these gentlemen in a work. friendly, welcomed manner. And so it's one of those things where they recognize that I'm not just someone just trying to get an interview because. You know, just trying to promote the show, whatever. No, the, I'm a diehard fan of Jody Shaver. I'm a diehard fan of J- uh, John Bogdanov. So, um, they hopefully, you're the real deal. I've harassed them enough, so they've come on the shows. They're going to hopefully they'll come on the show. Jody, I gotta, I gotta really harass him some more because. But I actually got a chance to meet him. He came through Rochester, yeah. and I met him at comics, etc. That so, was what, uh, right after Stranger Con? Right after Stranger. It was yeah. literally two days after Stranger Con. Yeah. So, right I would have loved to have him be there, but. Yeah. Probably, probably better if you didn't go. <laughs> that being said, holy shit, we are. This is like way past the time, but making up for lost time. Yeah, we haven't heard us for a month, so. Um, well, heard you, but. And we're still working on it. I know I haven't got a chance to update the website, but you can visit. Uh, you pretty much get all your links on two strangers one podcast dot com. Um, you know, there's links. Uh, I'm gonna go back on. I gotta start going back on eBay. I was on eBay for a little while. Um, Jesus Christ! So and we had you were a whole selling episode. stuff. I was selling stuff. We had, I can't believe I won a whole episode. We just passed Sandy TV shows and stuff like that, you know. So, but I'll, I'll, but I'll, I'll, I'll say hit that up. I'll nerd that, that up. up I'll, time. I'll, 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 I'll make proper show notes yeah. for San Diego Comic Con. Um, Everybody's talking about it right this second. Anyhow, by the time Thursday rolls around, people will probably not be talking about it so much. So. Yeah, I, you know, it's my thing, and, and I, I can't <laughs> believe I spoke for an hour and a half without really mentioning San Diego Comic Con. Um, but, uh, basically, you know, I'm selling comic books, I'm selling DVDs, I'm selling video games, I got a whole bunch of other, you know, tools. Basically, anything in my house that's not strapped down, I'm selling on eBay. Um, but I haven't set it up yet because of the moves and everything like that, and, and every, I haven't had a chance to the go. Moves. Yeah, since I move so many well. times, I keep moving my stuff, I can't sell it if I'm, if it's in boxes. Um, but, but you're settled now. You can so find our thing. eBay page. Uh, you can find us on iTunes. Um, basically, if you go to the podcast section and look up Two Strangers on Podcast, as of right now, I believe it's still Chris and Kristen, Two Strangers on Podcast. So, yeah. so um, but you'll see the red, white, and blue logo. Um, Is that going to change? I'm going to. People? Um, That's a good, I never even thought about that. You got to have anyone who's, anyone who's subscribed, anyone who has subscribed to us, 
Um, we, they, we may have to, uh, this is your warning people. Just, you know, we'll give you the heads up when and if it changes. Hopefully I can get it to change because actually I think, I think the actual name was called RSS feed, um, is under my name. Okay. Like I believe it's like Christopher Cologne. So I, you know, it's my baby, you know, so that's good. So, <laughs> so then you can find that under, which is what's basically, an RSS feed though for people who don't know like me. Well, R- RSS feeds is basically. <laughs> The, the the internet's way of getting um new updated information like whenever it renews um like basically iTunes like once a day will check every single RSS feed and okay. and, and basically like when this goes up on the web when this goes up on our server site um it has that new information in iTunes oh, updates see, Stitcher it. does that too but and they don't call does it, it an RSS feed oh, yeah, yeah, it's it just pops RSS off Android so I just don't, don't get confused if you see Chris and Chris and two strangers one podcast but heads up it may change soon but it, it'll definitely always be two strangers one podcast right. um under the podcast I, uh, just go to iTunes check the podcasts Two strangers, one podcast. That's how it always worked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It may, for the time being, still say Chris and Kristen, but I'm going to work on Kristen's that. I hope Kristen's still listening. Um, nice she, she never is. listened when... <laughs> she didn't listen? She never listened. She goes, I don't listen to it. She goes, I was there when we recorded. What the fuck am I going to listen to it for? And I understand, you know. That's funny. I listen to it because I'm egotistical and I hear my own voice. And, of course, I have Chris's <laughs> Hidden Metal Show, which is on the Live and Lame podcast entertainment. Okay, Live and Lame podcast entertainment.com, L-I-V-I-N-L-A-M-E podcast entertainment there's no g in living 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 lame podcast entertainment <laughs> which you know they have a bunch of shows there's living lame uh, the breakdown which is their music show which is what my chris's hidden metal show is on i just put out an episode last night or two nights ago um which by the time this goes out will be sunday whatever the chris's hidden metal show um there's the breakdown there's a fox den there's a real chat which i believe they're about to do an episode about sandy they started it all living lame podcast living lame l-i-v-a-n l-a-m-e um you can if you don't have an iphone ipad ipod and you don't want to subscribe to us on itunes there's the stitch rep s-t-i-t-c-h-e-r on the on android devices uh you can look it up I believe Stitcher is also available for iPhones also. Just letting you know. Any podcast worth listening to is on Stitcher. Absolutely. You got Kevin Smith's Smodcast. You got Chris Hardwick's The Nerdist. Adam Carolla. You know, This American Life. NPR. Oh, every also podcast Also suggest Brad Williams up on the... Oh, that's right. Brad about, not last about night. Last this night. Was about uh, You can find us on Stitcher. Two Strangers, One Podcast. Um, once again, the red, white, and blue logo. If you subscribe to us, basically every time we get a new episode, you know, right now we're still working on a schedule, but as soon as a new episode comes up, it'll update on the phone or on your tablet or whatever device you use. Um, what else? What else? What else? Buy my book, <laughs> doublejackpot.us. You'll hopefully at the end of this commercial, in this episode, you'll hear Kevin Smith advertising it. Uh, rochesterperfectweddings.com. Yep. Simply perfect weddings. Simply Perfect Weddings. Yes. Ed, but please. I mean, I was like confusing people just, yeah, you know, like, Rochester weddings Perfect Pearl. Weddings. Yes. You know, so if you, you know, hey, you know, we got four mouths to feed, so <laughs> make this shit happen. Yeah, it's um wedding um officiant, but it's also proposal planning, so. Proposal, which you don't really see. I mean, I've, that, I've oh, honestly, I didn't planning? even hear about it until you brought it up. But really? then again. But I mean, it's cool. That's a that's a good idea. Well, yeah, Plan because the, you know, the whole point about it is that like you have somebody who's working with you through the whole process from the start to the end, mm-hmm. and um, it's somebody who's not connected to the situation, so ruining the surprise is very like likely not to happen. Yeah. You know, unless like you start telling other people. And I mean, the good thing is too is like you know, with a lot of vendors and everything, we can pull off some pretty amazing things. Oh yeah, yeah. As I'm saying, I mean, I, maybe because I'm a guy. You know, and I was just, I, I never heard of proposal planning, but I mean, it's, it, it makes sense. It's one of those things where yeah. I never heard of, but it's, it's, don't those- fuck up your proposals. Do not yeah. pull over on the side of a road and just be like, do you guys, girls don't want to be proposed to on the fucking, uh, jumbotron at the frickin' big <laughs> and still be, you know, not do the stereotypical things that have been done before, you know, and also, you know, she may, it's say, she may say no in front of a million people on the jumbotron. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there yeah, has been. Actually, um, I remember seeing a video on YouTube one time with somebody who turned around and ran because they weren't expecting it and they weren't looking to say yes. So, so plan it out, guys. Yeah, plan you want to plan it out, but you also 
also want to make it very special, make it very unique to what your guys' love story is, and that's where I come in. So Yeah, and we are. Yeah. And remember, you're awakened. going to be retelling the way that you got Oh, how would you guys, you know, could tell, you know how would you propose? I mean, am I right, though? It is. No, yeah, it is. seriously. People want to know, they want to know how you got engaged. They want to know your ceremony later, too, if they weren't there. Mm. And, guys, nothing gets a woman hotter than you doing the right romantic thing so she can rub it in all her friends' faces. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have the to do wow that. wow gets the O, oh, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. You got you to gotta have that one story because then all the girls are like, oh, that's so romantic. So, you know. And then you get blown more. <laughs> and, like, yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's the whole reason you send them flowers at work. And it's, so that's like, like, if I, I couldn't send you flowers because, I mean, I, me? I could send you flowers. But I'm saying is, is there's no one for you to show the flowers off to. Oh, well, no. <laughs> I mean, most people, of your house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But that's okay. I'd have to I'd have to send you flowers when all the the homegirls are over at the house or something there you like go. that. Yeah. Um, but that being but that being said, guys, keep in mind that you know the it is you know you it's only get point. married once hope, allegedly. So don't don't skimp and be a fucking uh, go big or go plan. home. Yeah, you know, saying get a know, proposal planner. You know, this get girl, an expert. You know, if if she's cleaning out the fucking skid marks out out of your underwear, and <laughs> she has to sleep with your fat hairy ass. I mean, come on, do some do do it right. Start it right. Do it the right way. And uh, you know, I guess that's the guy's way of putting it. You know, like you yeah. know, she has to do with your with your dumb ass. So I mean, do the right thing when it comes to the proposal and the wedding and everything like that. Um, I guess that's the best way I could paint it for guys. Like, you know, do it right because she has, to, right. she has to deal with you. So, um, that's pretty much I everything. I think so. So what are we at? Um, two hours now? Probably? Yeah, an hour, past Almost. an hour, 45, and then look at the commercials and everything like that. So we're going to, this is going to basically be a two hour episode. Um, like I well, said, you welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> welcome back, strangers. Yeah. Thank you. And, and for everyone who's listening and we've gotten a lot of feedback and, and, um, Oh, there's a guy, uh, I actually got feedback from a gentleman in Chile. Really? And his, I forgot his last name was Turtle. I want to say. Was he like, you're so good? No, well, no, he. I like show. He, no, he's so good. No, he, <laughs> no, he was very, very honest and blunt with me about oh. uh, certain episodes that he didn't like. But then he does, he does like the show. He could teach you. Yeah. Oh, right yeah. On, though. Uh, but okay. When, when, when we were slipping, when we were slipping, uh, you know, uh, he was, he was very. So we have listeners in Chile. We, I, we, we have a uh, shout out to Dan, Dano, Dano Dono from Scotland. You know, we got people that were, this is an international wow. show. So right on. Um, um, you know, to all the guys. Yeah, we got know. an email address. What's our email address? Two strangers one podcast at gmail dot com. Send so, emails. Yeah, I would love oh, to know. Oh man, I would love it. Seriously, I mean, and you're not you don't you don't have to exaggerate. I mean, I would love even if you're from freaking Arizona, you know what I'm saying, or even if you're from freaking you know Trenton, New Jersey, just let us know where you're Ask where you're listening to. Tell us we suck. We don't care. Come on, <laughs> just some feedback. Any feedback's good. Yeah, there's one podcast at gmail. Any ideas you might have? You never know. Sometimes it takes the outside person yeah. to it figure out what. It's right for inside the box. Yeah. It does uh, happen. So uh, if you've come this far, uh, we're back. We're, we're, we're you know, it's, I'm sorry we've been gone for a month, but, you know, it's just been a lot of personal sh- One podcast. Um, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening and had as much fun as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Jennifer. Don't be a stranger. See ya. Bye. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris it's- Cologne smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her! That broke that fucking cold little look. Here, he's like, hee. But it is spelled C O L O N. Him, honey. But. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with oh, a materialist. I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell, sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Well, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia. Is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women, 
Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her. Fucking, she's impressed. I am. Summer, she got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher Colon smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think of this? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up. Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. (laughs) Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, and if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. (laughs) (laughs) Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15.00. And a PDF file is only five bucks. Five dollars yeah. is insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on. Come I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm going to make that smelly joke. I know. You're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. (laughs) Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I will totally read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. How is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. And you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you, I'm out.